That's right, it's MLB Central's postseason special digital version of your favorite morning show. Mark DeRosa, Lauren Shahadi, I'm Robert Flores. You're getting a different look at beautiful Studio 21. Just yeah. showing you a little bit of the guts of and the behind the scenes. Behind the scenes of where we do MLB Central. But that of course is on linear TV or cable, satellite, whatever. But this is an MLB Central digital version. We're already relaxed as a show, yeah. but this allows us to take our time a little bit more, interview Absolutely. players, and kind of. We got Tyler story. Glass now going to be joining coming us. Up. Can't that, wait for I it. like the long form interview. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have the guys come on from different teams, and we're able to hit them with a couple questions. I like the chance to get a good 15, 20 minutes yeah. with somebody and take me down like what's made them become who they are. What are you going to ask, Tyler? Well, first off, he's a handsome devil. He's beautiful. <laughs> he's a beautiful specimen. That's what he is. Just coming back from Tommy John, how hard was it? How fired up he is to start game two against the Guardians here coming up. So I'm sure yeah. he's got a lot on his plate. I think about the guys driving to the yard because you always talk about mindset when you played in a postseason game and it was different and you felt like any guy could be the hero. You're yeah. driving to the yard on Friday. What are you thinking about? Exactly that, Lauren. I, I was always – and. I would hope, or I tried to help my teammates with this, know where you stand that given day. It's always subject to, to change. I always used to say for 162, I kind of knew who I was. Like, I was, I was a nice piece. I wasn't going to win an MVP or a batting title. I wasn't going to hit in the middle of a lineup or have to carry it. So I don't know that pressure. But in the postseason, we've seen it time and time again. Yeah. Anybody can Anyone be can the be hero. Here. By the way, that's nice what I used piece. to say. Why not me tonight? Why not me tonight? Nice piece was my nickname in high school. Oh, was really? It? Yeah. Who that's, gave that to you? A lot of people. <laughs> uh, so the many. The list people. goes on. Hey, and before on. you let D Row do his predictions here, let me run through okay. them. Okay. I, I'm not going to be as long as D Row, so I want to save time. Do you like and your how prediction? similar is this? What you're holding to what you predicted in the beginning of the season? Did I'm going to be honest with you. I have no idea okay. how I predicted in the uh, in Sounds the about right. season. Okay. I, I don't know. So here it's we better go. To All do right. What you got? To so go I, I'm gonna let, let's show it to you here. Maybe you're listening to an audio version. You can't see it, but so whatever. Run it through. We'll go here. Uh, first round. I've got the uh, Guardians taking out the Tampa Bay Rays. I've got the then the Guardians taking out the New York Yankees Shocker in the division you'd series. Pick that. Shocker, you'd pick that. <laughs> you know, um, and, and the lower half of the bracket, I've got the uh, Toronto Blue Jays beating the Seattle Mariners. All three. Remember, all three games are going to be in Toronto. I've got the Astros beating the Toronto Blue Jays to advance to the ALCS where they will face the Guardians Astros into the World Series yet again representing the American League Cardinals Phillies Cardinals to face the Atlanta Braves the Mets I have the Mets beating the Dodgers facing I'm sorry the Mets beating the Padres Mets losing to the Dodgers where it's Dodgers Braves again the NLCS again Astros lose to the Atlanta Braves again in the world. If Terry Series. Francona gets the Guardians to the ALCS, it'll be one of the greatest coaching performances. Doing I, it with the youngest team in the in the. Oh! Major. I asked you if that was similar to in the beginning of the season. It wasn't because we had the White Sox. I had the White we Sox winning. Well, we all did. Yeah. We all had them winning the Central. So, after watching 162, my answers should change here. But. But being that I don't love the prediction segment portion <laughs> because you don't don't know what's going to happen obviously i'm going to stay with what i picked on opening day right because both teams are alive so i'm going to run you through mine real quick okay. all right i yep. got the guardians as well had this had this been in a trap i would have changed my answer mm -hmm. but i think progressive field their three starters they're able to get by tampa who we don't know what we're getting out of mcclanahan how long can tyler glass now pitch true maybe four or five innings max so I'm going to go there. I'm going to have the Yankees beating the Guardians. I think it's a lot to ask the Guardians to get to the ALCS. I'm going to put the Yankees there. Man, my last year, 2013, I spent the whole season with the Toronto Blue Jays. I know the six is going to be going off. I can't imagine Seattle comes in there and wins that series. All right, Toronto against Houston. Here's where I truly in my heart don't think Toronto is able to knock off the Houston Astros. I think they're unbelievably powerful. But for sake of staying – the same as opening day. Toronto wins. We have to clear customs. Toronto's <laughs> able to knock off the Yankees. They have eliminated. I remember it used to be a thing. Toronto playing in Yankee Stadium. They can't win there. That has gone bye-bye. 
Okay? So Toronto's your American League representative in the World Series. I like Philly. I don't like the way Seattle's limping in pitching staff-wise. St. Louis, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, St. Louis. San Diego here against the New York Mets. Mm. Metsies can't collapse. I mean, you can't lose the division and lose the first round of the playoffs in a 10-day stretch. <laughs> they won't be able to overcome it. Their Steve fans Cohen won't be able that. to overcome it. So I got the Dodgers versus the Mets. The Dodgers advance to the NLCS against the Atlanta Braves, where Atlanta's playing as good as anybody yeah. right now. But I'm going to go Toronto Dodgers. There's a reason you win 111 games. I'm going to pick the Dodgers to win it all. Yeah. Now, Lauren's not making picks because, of course, she's part of uh, TBS's broadcast. Yeah, she's so got to walk past Doug Yeah, we, 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 respect, we respect that. <laughs> but but real quick, T-Row, uh, who either on the AL or the NL could make a surprise team that could make a deep run into the postseason? I do, I do think the Toronto Blue Jays can make a huge run at this. Yeah. I think they're young, talented, <laughs> absolutely mash the baseball. They are. They haven't played their best baseball until the end. So I feel like they definitely could. Guardians, that's a lot to ask. I love the young. And I'll tell you a sleeper team, the Phillies. Mm. Nola, Nola, Wheeler, Wheeler, the bullpen has been much better. Bryce Harper, the thumb, he's got to come through with a big knock. Him and Castellanos have both limped down the stretch. But if they get hot, that lineup's scary. Yeah. But St. Louis will not beat themselves. You're right. They will be fundamentally no. disciplined. Absolutely. As sound, always. As always. It all gets started on Friday. I mean, talk about a beautiful day in the game. We are going to be locked in, starting in Cleveland with the Rays and the Guardians. Can't wait. Making his first opening day start. Glassnell for the Rays. Radar gun is going to be popping. But Tyler Glassnell could not be much better than he has been tonight. Through six innings. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. That slider becoming the go-to after the fastball. Eighth strikeout for Tyler Glassnell. It has been a great pitching performance from Tyler Glassnell. He gets a great hand. The hook. Tyler Glassnell is able to work through and keep his team in the lead. Oh, we are thrilled to be joined by Tyler Glass now. What a treat. Tyler, good morning to you. First, first second he popped on the screen, what would you say? I mean, I'm a pretty confident guy. I don't like to change places with too many people. Yeah. I ran into him at, at Atlanta Hartsfield Airport. <laughs> Six foot seven amongst to see this gorgeous human being, <laughs> and he's just waving at me. I'm like, man, I might... 24 hours, I'd like to know what it feels like to be Tyler Glass now. Tyler, what does it feel like to be Tyler Glass now? I don't know. You just see over people, I guess, maybe, <laughs> like that. I don't know. A lot of people ask you how tall you are. All the all the standard tall people questions, you know. d says you can't protect your family, family if you're under 200 pounds. Do you agree with that? I would agree with that. I think it depends on how, like, how uh, versed you are in maybe like some martial arts or something, but and or how bad you want it, you know? Who knows? That, that's that's a good point, Tyler. I like to dabble a, a little bit in the yes, uh, he does in the pugilistic yeah. arts, uh, Lauren. <laughs> so even though I am below 200, Tyler, if you get feeling froggy, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, I can see it. <laughs> hey, Tyler, a answer me this: You guys finished on like what seems you've been on the road for a month, and now you're going to get rolling here with Cleveland. How did you pack for this? <laughs> not well. I came from AAA, so I've had like four pairs of pants and like not that much. <laughs> I've just been taking my my suitcase into the clubhouse and doing laundry and stuff. Are you and really? Like, wow. Yeah, stopping by some places, grabbing some clothes. It's I'm like so used to it, just being in the minor leagues, and I really don't mind kind of living that type of mm. lifestyle. I well, I, I said you can do your laundry <laughs> at the hotel, and Dira looked at me like I was an alien, and he you. said. No, you buy new stuff. Yeah. Is that the truth? I think it probably, it's like a mix of both. I don't want to do, I don't want to sound cheap either, but like just the principle of how much laundry is at the hotel is shocking. It's <laughs> unbelievable. It's like a, a shirt is $10, a collar is like $15. Oh, he's right. It's it's fine, bag, but like I'm, I'm all right. Yeah, he, he's, I'm he's cool right about that. that. No, now, Tyler, yeah. are, are you, when you're having to shop for these uh, new garments, or is it strictly. Big and tall. I mean, what what are we looking here? I mean, uh, I can't. Like Calvin he Cole can't buy off model. the rack. Yes, he can. There's like you find like certain places you can go. I guess to like a, a standard. If you need something quick, you go to like a Nordstrom's and yeah. just kind of. Okay. There's like certain brands that have like long fitting pants, but shirts I'm generally okay. But shoes and pants I'm I'm not. Yeah. Who right. Do, how, usually. Who yeah. do people tell you you look like? 
uh, Cillian Murphy. Is it Killian or Cillian? I think it's. I think it's it's Killian, Killian Murphy, and that's an excellent call. That is a striking resemblance. Lauren has long maintained uh, that there is a. <laughs> Um, a, a Willy Wonka, you are a Gene handsome, Wilder, a, a very handsome, and, and let me assure you, handsome. Tyler, she is the only one that thinks you look like Gene Wilder. Okay, <laughs> okay, uh, that that is that is without a doubt. So please don't be offended by that. Um, it's no, just I think Lauren. I Gene Wilder is a phenomenal See? actor. I guess See? this isn't like a skill based comparison, but I'll 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 find some compliments at there. the top of your game. Take it. Yeah. Absolutely. All right, take take me through it. Right, you're going to probably get the game two start here. How fired up are you? How long a road back was it for you? Take me into your darkest moments and then now a chance to kind of recapture glory for the Rays. Yeah, I think going into it, I think early on in the beginning of the season, it was like, there's no chance you're going to like, you're basically just working towards getting healthy so you can pitch the following year. Um, and I kind of mapped it out in my head and it was like, I think it's around like 14 months when playoffs. And I was like, if, if the timetable is 12 to 15, I'm like, I think my chances are, are pretty good and I ended up having my ankle scoped and I think that's when they were like all right let's just kind of call it off but my progression had been so well and uh, I, I got the hybrid surgery I got like the reconstruction with that new collagen brace so I think in my mind I don't know if the science backs it up but I was like double strong it's fine like I'm, yeah. I'm, I'll be okay and I think as I was throwing bullpens and doing stuff and working out like my soreness level compared to when I wasn't healthy, it was night and day. And I was like, well, if I could go pitch 88 innings with like a failing ligament, I feel like how good I feel now and how I'm recovering and how I'm bouncing back. It's been the best it's felt in so long. So that's kind of. So it wasn't one pitch uh, yeah. and you felt this was kind of a progression to, to, to TJ. Yeah. So I, I, it was against the Orioles in 19. I threw a change up. It was like 95 and I got in like the, the film is like weird. I, I got really under it. I like tried to pronate it really early. And that's when I initially did it, but there wasn't enough pain to make me, and I was still throwing hard when I'd come back and pitching games. So it was like, if you're throwing hard, your ligaments stable enough to like, as long as there's not like excruciating pain, you can yeah. pitch if your V looks still there. So I was just, I kept doing that every year and uh, it was, it got tougher and tougher each start. And then finally in 21, I was like, all right, I gotta, I gotta figure this out. And the MRIs never changed. It was like, you're fine. Your ligament looks relatively intact. And then when they went in, they found that it was like unattached on the bone. So it just wasn't something that you could see on an MRI. Um, but yeah, it was always something I was able to do. I was able to like throw hard and my stuff was still fine. So it really wasn't that big of a deal. But um, yeah, it just started. Uh, it was finally time to get it done. And I'm glad I did because now it's like I completely forgot what it was like. So for the three years, it was so uncomfortable. Now I'm like, wow, this is it's nice to have something in there. Like, yeah. keeping my elbow together. <laughs> yeah. Do you lift weights? Do you run? Tell about tell us about your diet all of it yeah uh i've had my like the same five day for quite a, a bit of time um i'd say off season i do like a lot more lifting but in season it's like a full body lift or a, a lower body post day and then the following day it's upper body with like a, a classic, kind of mixed cardio classic circuit classic yeah circuit. Like normal normal stuff then bullpen day and then like a light day and then you know just the same it's pretty standard i'd say for like a starter i'd say maybe I don't know. I like to do like a good amount. I think it helps me as far as like the longevity and season and like. Are you running to, stadiums? No, I'm not a big. I no. used to run a lot. Like I used to do. I try to if I am in a run, I'll try to keep it to like quick burst sprints. But I, really? I'm a big like elliptical and bike junkie. And then like lifting is mostly what I like though. Like is probably my my bread and butter. Yeah, Tyler has a really good video on his Instagram account about that takes people through his day his routine. Workouts after a start, so I urge you to check it out. I, I also heard you say, Tyler, that you your personality was so closely tied to baseball that when you yeah. were when that when baseball was great, mm -hmm. you were great. But that when baseball yeah. wasn't so great, same thing. So how have you navigated your way and what have you discovered about yourself through these last couple of years? Uh, I think that I think it was like more of like putting in an effort to like not make baseball everything, I guess. I think I was so up and down with it that I was like, I got to figure something else out here. Like, I think it was just trying to find the things that I enjoyed outside of baseball, not being so like one track mind in season. And it gets really tough. I'm just like, d you can probably understand Man, this. It's I'm, just I'm feeling it your, right now. <laughs> it's so like, it's just, it's all you kind of, there's not much like, you can find stuff to do outside of the field, but every player always is like, well, I don't want to do too much because I have to play today and I'm tired. And I think it was just finding that balance of like, 
living a normal life, like pretending I'm not a baseball player and trying to find things to do while mixing in, like, obviously this is my job and I have to, to do it. But it was just, as long as I'm like in a nice balance between like not giving baseball, like absolutely everything. And then I also not giving it enough. Like it's just somewhere, somewhere in the middle there. And it's always like a up and down roller coaster in season. But I just think if you can kind of zoom out and give yourself like a, a bigger perspective of like, life as opposed to baseball like they're you know it's just like it's not the end of the world if things don't go well in one start it's so funny you say that Uh, you come from a very athletic family I wonder like my dad was baseball through and through I remember him coming to Chicago when I was playing for the Cubs and I went oh for four two punch outs I got in the car and I was like what you know where are we going for dinner what are we doing but and he's like what like yeah we're not going anywhere like (laughs) And, and yeah. he couldn't understand. I'm like, Dad, if I, if, if I consume myself with the day-to-day, yeah. like, it's taken me 33 years to figure this out. Like, I have to be okay failing a little bit. I wonder, take me back, like, being in an athletic family, your brother was a decathlete, your mom, your mom was a gymnast, I think. Your father was yeah. a great. Was he tough on, tough on you, or did he understand kind of the, the trials and tribulations of it? No, I think he was, he knew he didn't play baseball. So I think it was at a certain point when I was younger and I would throw, uh, like we'd go outside and, and, th- and like play catch outside or I, I always was like very wild as a kid. And I would throw, I would walk like a bunch of people in a game and he'd be like, I don't understand how you can hit the same spot in the dirt five times, but you can't just throw it a little higher in the strike zone. And I'm like, yeah, dad, I don't know. It's tough. I'm, like, I'm not trying that. I promise. Yeah, like I'm, I'm, this is tough. And then I think as I got older, it was like, all right, dude, you don't play baseball. But like he was, it's always out of love. And like I was always able to take stuff like mentality wise or like work ethic wise. Like that was, I was always very receptive to that. But I think when it was like any specific sort of baseball, I was like, all right, I got it. I'm, just, I'm I, I got this on my own. Don't worry about it. Like, Tyler, you used to frustrate me. I remember you got I called up with the myself. Pirates yeah. and you would yeah. be like, boom, boom, boom. And then hit, like, Nuke Lelouch type stuff. And I'm like, man, if this dude ever figures it out, it's going to be scary. But I thought you were going to kill somebody before you figured it yeah. out. Yeah, there was a couple games where I thought I was going to kill somebody, too. I remember the <laughs> the, the Phillies game. I uh, I think I hit Cameron Rupp in the head and Aaron Nola, like, very close. And their whole dugout was like, dude, if you can't throw strikes, like, get off the mound. And I was just, like, very young. It was overwhelming. And I think that was kind of... Obviously, it's never intentional, but I think as you like the, as you get more reps, like physically and mentally, you become more comfortable. And I think it's more about just like proprioceptively, like understanding where my body is in space. I was like yeah. six, seven, like trying to. I was like finishing puberty. <laughs> it was just such yeah. a weird. No. Like, it was Golly. just strange, and I think it's, it's gotten easier over time. So. So, what was the turning point for you? I mean, you it sounded like you're barely <laughs> keeping your head above water. Who? Uh, helped you and and what was the the moment that you feel like kind of like that light bulb moment um I think in 2018 before I got traded I think I started to understand like I don't need to try to I think this goes for a lot of teams and a lot of young guys like when you're setting up like OO on the corner so I would I would just try to throw like each heater perfectly low and away or whatever and then I'd be 1-0 and then I throw a curveball 46 feet, and I'm 2-0, and then now everyone in the stadium knows the fastball is coming, and I'm yeah. still struggling with location. And I'm just setting up on the corners and trying to be Greg Maddox, um, and I can barely throw strikes. So I think it was something – someone in another organization, actually, who is, like, very analytically, like, inclined, mm-hmm. basically said, your stuff is so good and you have good carry, set up down the middle and just try to go up and down. Stop trying to go left and right. Mm-hmm. Um and so I was like, wow, that's that's pretty smart. And then I immediately got traded to the Rays a week later and everything they said, basically, like they went deeper into it and sitting down with Kyle and understanding like you have good stuff. If you're confident and you can throw strikes, you just need to get ahead. It doesn't really matter where it is in the zone. And at the time too, it was like, it's going to be better than what you're doing now. So just <laughs> try it. <laughs> like, And that helped me a lot. I think too, just the, the, like the change in atmosphere and change in teams. I think I'd been typecasted kind of with the pirates and like you get put into like a nook of like, okay, this kid mentally can't figure it out. He's all over the place. He, you know what I mean? And I think I went to another organization and almost felt like I could, nobody knew me and I could like reinvent myself and I wasn't this, this kid anymore. And, uh, they gave, they had, they gave me a lot of 
confidence, I guess. I was in the bullpen just kind of melting away with Pittsburgh. And then they said, Eric called me. He's like, you're starting tomorrow. So it was like, wow, these dudes want me to start. This is kind of awesome. And I had a good first one and a good second one. I think the biggest thing too is like, whether it's a mentality shift or not, it's once you start doing well, you get like a little confidence boost and then you can ride that out. And then it kind of puts everything into perspective. Wow. Tyler, I went to the trout for the very first time. d has described <laughs> what it's like to play there for opposing mm -hmm. players. How would you describe yeah. it? I think for me, it's kind of home. Like I, I came from Pittsburgh and started pitching there. So it, I have like a good feeling with it as far as how the mound is set up and like how it feels to pitch. I, I really enjoy it. It's obviously not the most lively atmosphere. I think it's in like a, a weird location for yeah. a lot of people to get to, but you do as a player with the Rays feel like there's a lot of love around Tampa for you. I think like our TV deals are pretty, are good. I know that there's a lot of viewership. I just think with location and uh, the stadium being like relatively old, I, I don't think a, like a lot of people will show up. It's great in the playoffs, but I definitely think it's a stadium that I can do well in. Cause for me, if I'm in like the GCL doing a live BP or if I'm in triple A or if I'm in, I, I kind of always can kind of, I care a lot about doing well. So for me, I can always get up and, and try to get my stuff. And I don't think my stuff really deviates with adrenaline, but I can see it's, it's probably pretty tough for away teams. And that's, that's fine by me. <laughs> yeah. Are you partaking? Are you a beach guy like Tampa? What are you doing on an off day? You hitting, getting a base tan <laughs> or are you doing something a little bit different? I'll do. So like when I was injured, I think the hardest part about it was finding things to do. So I would go to the beach all the time. I would go a bunch. And then there's a, there's like this boat club service there where you can like, rent out blocks of time for a boat and there's a dock by my house. So I would just go on the boat a lot. And then I'd go up to Tampa. I'd come back and watch the games a lot. Um, so it was basically that like a lot of beach, a lot of, uh, a lot of boats and then a lot of baseball. <laughs> Tyler, you, you mentioned the, uh, the, the trop and I, I feel like, you know, for, for baseball fans around the, around the country, the rays are that plucky little, underdog team they play in a stadium that's kind of unique and and sometimes it's filled sometimes it's not for the playoffs you know it's going to be loud what what do we not know about the Rays or what's something that should be discussed more about your organization and your team and your teammates uh I don't know if it's I think I think the reason people are able to to come up and succeed so quick as I think they become like when you come from other organizations, not knocking other organizations, I don't know how to like run an organization, but I think there's so much like the, like the unwritten rules and, and like certain things you can or can't do. I think a lot of times <clears throat> young guys get called up and they're, they're more worried about like not stepping on anyone's toes or they're not, they're worried more about like, how am I perceived or like, how am I, Am I doing everything right? Like, am right. I wearing the right type of pants on the flight and stuff? And the Rays, I think, to the outside perspective, I think people could be like, well, if you just let players do what they want, like, people will just start to, like, there's no rules and no structure, no anything. But yeah. when you get to this level, it's like everyone here has worked so hard to get to. No one's, like, going to throw it away. Just, like, so there's no, like, hierarchy or, or rules that you need to follow. I think if you're doing something, the team can kind of get to, if they don't like it, I think it's more of, people being like, don't do that. But there's, n there's no rules. Like you come up and you're really, really comfortable. And I think most guys who come up here, I've had multiple conversations with people from other organizations that will be like, is this like real? Is this like a weird, or like, are we just in like a strange time? I'm like, no, this is how it is. So you're just able to be yourself and, and kind of do what you want. And there really are no rules other than be a good teammate and, and be on time. Those are the so, two things that Cash says. So the rookies don't sing on the bus? <laughs> no, we still do that. See, that's what I, I'm talking no, about. No, 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 you don't no, have don't. to treat them like, us. like dirt, yeah. but I, I'd like no, to right, see you exactly. sing. I don't think the last two years we've done that. We did three years ago. We still do like rookie dress up, but there's yeah, no, I like that. There's no, I don't think they do the, the singing or anything anymore. No. Cause that's tough for some people. Like I get <laughs> you, you're trying to like be vulnerable and, and let people kind of put their guard down. But yeah. I think sometimes it could, it's a little uncomfortable <laughs> for guys. <laughs> so but no, yeah, it's 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 like a comfortable atmosphere for guys. If you didn't play baseball, what would you do? Ooh, good question. <sighs> Ooh, be an Abercrombie I, and Fitch model. I, I was going to say, have you ever been <laughs> approached about modeling? Seriously, had to. Uh, kind Famous. of, but I, I yeah. not. No, I don't want to. I don't want to do that. I don't know. Zoolander. I'm style? too tall too. I don't think that's like the. I'm too. I'm 
too large. I don't think I'd fit in the frame very well, especially if it was with someone else. <laughs> but if I didn't play baseball, I don't know. It depends. If, do I have to, like, is is money involved? Like, do I have to make a living? Or yeah, is it you have to support a family. Probably, I don't know. Probably, I'd love to work in, like, a startup, I'd say. Like, a really, I think it's similar to baseball in terms of, like, the culture of you kind of being with people and, like, creating what, the future looks. Like, I'd say probably try to get early stage startup and like figure out how to like so you're build in, a company. He wants to or work something. with Elon Musk. You're into the techie stuff. <laughs> yeah. Not really. No. Not. I don't. I'm like terrible on my phone. I think more about like just startups in general. But I don't even know like a a company or something. But my brother does that. He's like a, does like business development for startup, and I'm relatively similar to him. And it's, he's very passionate about it. And like just having conversations with him about it, it sounds cool. Just taking something from like a few employees and building it up but also that's also on the flip side sounds extremely boring so i don't know <laughs> no. <laughs> like to how about just start game two in progressive <laughs> yeah, field right. and shove against the guardians which is that's uh, what I, that's, uh, yeah i'll do that <laughs> he definitely has the stuff to do it hey tyler we appreciate you joining yeah, us thank here you. uh best of luck yeah, to you and best of luck to your uh, tampa bay rays in the postseason and uh, congratulations on returning from the injury and we're glad that you're pain-free Thank you, dude. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me on, guys. You got it. That's Tyler Glass now, the Tampa Bay Rays. And we want to thank you for joining us on this MLB Central postseason special as we venture out into the digital world. Enjoy the postseason. And remember, you can catch MLB Central weekdays, Monday through Friday on MLB Network, 9 a.m. Eastern. Thank you for joining us.